Yes, yeah, so I'm sharing this morning on a message I've entitled Doing Unto Others. We have read about this scripture all the time, right? We talk mm -hmm. about it ourselves because it makes sense. So today we are looking at this. The Lord has laid this message upon my heart. And when I had it last week, I was thinking to myself, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? You, I, I always have these conversations because there's just one sentence there. What mm -hmm. is it that you want me to talk about? But let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke. The same scripture is there in the book of Matthew, but we, we are going to use the book of Luke today. Um, I'm reading from Luke chapter 6 from verse 27 to 38, and I'm using the amplified version. Good morning, everyone. Did I even greet you? I don't know if I greeted you. I just morning, course. I had greeted everyone. <laughs> <laughs> when you are worshiping, you are thinking everyone has been spoken to. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was busy talking to God. I didn't speak to you. Good morning. My household and I are doing good morning. Well. Good morning. And we thank the Lord for his faithfulness, for his goodness. Amen. 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 <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Amen. But I say to you, who here? Sorry, I, but I say to you who hear me and pay attention to my words, meaning there are people who don't listen to God. So here he is addressing the sheep of his pasture. He's saying, you hear me. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So he's addressing the sheep of his pasture. He is addressing you and I, right? The fact that we are here means we are his followers and followers listen to their leaders. Amen. So Amen. this is for his church. I'm getting a little bit of distortion. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Just make sure you're not moving around so that if the message is not distorted. Amen. So this is for his church. We are part of his church. Amen. He says Amen. to us, love, love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies. Make it a practice to do good to those who hate you. In short, he says, love your enemies. I don't know about you, but at times it's hard, right? It's hard to love people that mess us up. Amen. So we are children of God. And we are being told, love. If you remember, he's talking to you and I. He's not talking to people who don't know him, people who don't care about his word. He's talking to you and I. He says, love your enemies. And I was thinking, wow, you know, I've come across this so many times. But even if I'm a child of God, it's, it's, it's hard at times to love the people who mess us up. He goes on to say, bless and show kindness to those who curse you. Like, that's not enough. You should even bless them, right? Pray for those who mistreat you, okay? So if you know those who mistreat you, if you're going to pray for those who mistreat you, it means you know them. It's not, it's not like you're making a general prayer. Like, you know, people like to pray, oh, we pray for everyone in the world. We Have you come across people who pray? You know, we pray for those in prisons. We pray for those on the street. It's not a general prayer. This one is directed to those that mistreat you, right? The ERV says, which is the easy to read version, says, ask God to bless the people who ask for bad things to happen to you. Hello. <laughs> There's some people who are actually waiting for bad things to happen to you, but we are told, ask God to bless them. Pray for the people who are mean to you. Hello. Today's message is hard, eh? <laughs> So we have heard people say a lot of nasty things about us, right? We have heard people say it in our faces. They, they, they don't even hide the fact that they want something to go wrong in your life, whether it is your children, whether it's yourself, whether it's your job, anything, something about you must just go wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell me how I should pray for people like that, <laughs> right? So it's not a secret that even close family members wish you were a failure. They wish mm -hmm. you could just drop dead. They wish something could just happen to you. Mm -hmm. And we should pray for them. We should ask God to bless them. Mm -hmm. But we are told, you know, to ask God to, to bless these people that are mean, mm -hmm. these people that are bringing all sorts of torment with their words, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us are already saying, Lord, you have asked for a hard thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I remember some, some people who were following him, leaving him because, you know, some of the things that he was talking about, they would say, Lord, this is hard, and they would leave. But you know, they would throw in the <laughs> and just leave. And we are in this place today. The good news is about, uh, you know, encouragement, but it's also about direction. It's about correction when we are going wrong. It's about what he wants, not what we want. It's not about how comfortable we feel about the situation. It's about what he wants. It's not about us. Amen. Amen. So the truth is you can't do all these things if you have no fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Impossible, right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to obey this word when we are told. He's the one who is directing us and he gives us, you know, that grace. Without the grace of the Lord, it is impossible to be the kind of people he wants us to be. Amen. It is impossible to be kind to people who we know are bad to us. It's not possible. It will only happen by the grace of God. So let's read on. 29, whoever strikes you on the cheek, offer him the other one. <laughs> offer him the other one also, right? Simply ignore insignificant insults or losses and do not bother to retaliate. Maintain your dignity. This is what we are being reminded. So some things are really immaterial, but some of us, we really go after them. Anything that is said about us, Anything that we hear will go and, you know, hold somebody by the collar and tell them where to get off. I hate every small thing has to be addressed and we're being reminded. Sometimes don't bother about immaterial things. Some things are really insignificant. You know, maintain your dignity. We don't need to respond to everything that is being said or done to us. Let go of some situations. Simply walk away. This is a reminder for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's read on. Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. That's why I'm saying today's message, we are saying, Lord, you're asking for a difficult thing today. But we are going to learn how all these things can be achieved. You know, without God, we cannot achieve all these things that he's talking about. Amen. So whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you. Anyone who's asking of anything, anything that is being asked of you, give it to them. Whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Hello? So don't call me back and say, give me back my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I always misuse scripture, right? It's very yeah. easy to pick something like this and say, whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it yeah. back. So yeah. a lot of people would look at this, right? Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. Now, even those who don't attend church regularly know this particular scripture. They have their own timing for it. They will always quote this scripture. We all like this scripture, right? It's not a secret. We like it. When we are grieved, when we are mistreated, we like it, right? But then are we treating others right? We want to be treated right, but are we treating others right? So it's a two-way thing. It's not just uh, you know, the word going to other people, but it is also the word for us. Let's read on verse 32. If you only love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. That is how it goes in the world. Okay, I love you and you love me back, right? I give you this and tomorrow, that is how sinners live. So what difference is it going to make to you, a believer, if you just love those who love you back? If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Saying, Lord, you have asked for a difficult thing today, right? <laughs> this should have been the title, the difficult thing he has asked for us today. So for even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect to receive it back, what credit is that to you? It's a hard thing, right? Even mm -hmm. sinners lend to sinners, Kalova. Yeah, you give each other money and you get it back. Mashonisa, that is what I'm talking about here. There's Mashonisa everywhere. They lend money to each other. Village banking, you lend money to the and there's even a profit. Hello. So, even sinners lend to sinners expecting to receive back the same amount. But today, they're not even asking for the same amount. They want profit. That's what we're talking about here. Thank God some people haven't seen this scripture. Otherwise, most of us would suffer, 
Those who don't read the Bible, those who do wrong things, they haven't seen this scripture. Otherwise, we would suffer because they would say, but what credit is it going to be to you? You are a child of God. You're not supposed to demand money from me. They will tell us that, right? They will borrow money from you and not want to retain it because you are an obedient child of God. How tough is that, right? So they will assume that you yourself, being a child of God, you have read this scripture and you have a revelation that they have taken money from you and you should not demand it back. That is what they would have done. But thank God they haven't seen it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> When they see it, may they have a revelation. But then those who borrow also forget, right? That we are told not to owe anyone anything. Mm, yeah. So the Bible is not contradicting itself here. So as much as I may not demand anything that has been taken from me, that person must remember that they must not owe me anything because that is what we are told. It's a two-way thing. Oh, no one, anything. Amen. Amen. That is how we balance off here. So he goes on to say, verse 35, but love that is unselfishly, mm. but love that is, but love that is, I'm using the amplified version. You know, the amplified version always has brackets, right? So then I'll read it this way. But love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and do good and land expecting nothing in return. Hello, mm. you land and you expect nothing in return. We need to learn. For your reward will be great, rich, abundant, and you will be sons of the Most High because he himself is kind and gracious and good to the ungrateful and the wicked. Okay, so you mm. and I, we know who the wicked are, okay, mm. because we can see <laughs> the things that they do to us. But God, at the end of the day, knows their hearts. But you see, the way God is, he is so gracious, he is so merciful to them. He's mm -hmm. merciful even to the bad people. He causes even the sun to shine. If it were up to us, most of us would say, you know what, the sun won't shine on this house today. So it shines here. On your house, it won't shine because of who you are. So then everybody will call you a witch because it was shining everywhere. Your house was dark. But God... God remains God, right? Be merciful, be responsive, be compassionate, be tender, just as your heavenly father is merciful. That is the message. Amen. We are to imitate him in all things. So this simply means when we do things for other people, we must not expect them to do what we did for them when we are in need. Okay. So if I give you money, for instance, I shouldn't expect that when I'm in need, you are also going to give me money. This is a problem that we have. People are watching us. When, when they do something for us, you know, they are busy, to, you know, when, when you, they see that you got a bonus, or maybe those who like social media, you are posing your own holiday, say, ah, I gave this money, this, this family money. And meanwhile, when we are in need, they haven't given us money, they have gone on holiday. It shouldn't be like that. When you do anything for other people, just do it wholeheartedly. Do it according to the way you have purposed in your heart to just do it. Amen. Amen. So we don't expect other people to return the same favor. If we visit them in hospital, don't expect to be visited by that person you visited when you are on that sick bed. It doesn't work like that. I'm sure some of you have experienced that. You will visit everyone else. And that is how even leadership is. You will check on everyone else. Mm. But when you are in trouble, when you are sick, nobody phones. They don't care. You see? Mm -hmm. But then we are doing all these things because this is what the Lord demands us to do. God is kind and gracious to us even when we are ungrateful for the things he does for us. We are so ungrateful every day. We wake up, we grumble, we mama, we do all sorts of things. We admire things around us and we are not grateful for just what he has blessed us with. But he remains faithful. He remains kind. He remains gracious. Amen. At times, there's wickedness in us, but he is still merciful. That is why the psalmist was even saying, search me, oh God, and know my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me, because he knows there's a possibility. There are times when we are wicked, we are offensive, and then we are thinking we are all upright. But there's wickedness, but he remains faithful. So we need to show the same kind of mercy to people, right? Like he has shown us, this is the lesson of that scripture that I have just read. So let's not wait for people to do the things that we do for them. Amen. Mm. Let's read on yeah. 37. 
Do not judge others self-righteously and you will not be judged, right? Do not condemn others when you are guilty and unrepentant and you will not be condemned for your hypo hypocrisy. Pardon others when they truly repent and change. I wish people could also read this, that there's a matter of repenting. There's a matter of change. Amen. So when people say they are repenting, they mustn't just say it in their mouth, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the, the next day they are doing the same thing. And then when you don't forgive them, they are surprised why you don't want to associate with them. But then we are told, we are encouraged, pardon others when they truly repent and change. Yeah. And you will be pardoned when you truly repent and change. Amen. Amen. The message version, Amen. I picked it from the message version as well. It says, don't pick on people. Jump mm -hmm. on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. So the yeah. issue of looking around us and speaking on people that have failed, and then we begin to criticize them. We're thinking we are better, right? That is judgment. Mm -hmm. Every time we're thinking we are better than others, we are judging them. May the Lord help us. Amen. May the Lord help us mm -hmm. to look within ourselves so mm -hmm. that, you know, it's not because we, we have spoken. That is when we have judged. Even in our hearts, we judge. Before mm -hmm. we say anything, we have already judged. But outside, we'll be saying, oh, okay, that is nice. But then in my heart, I'm saying, mm. You know, wow, look at them mm -hmm. and all that. So this is also in our hearts. Most of the time, people don't read and understand the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just pick out scriptures and misinterpret them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we read passages like this, let's take time to meditate. We're talking about judgment. We're talking about yeah. pardoning people. We're talking about forgiveness. When we come across such passages, let's take time to meditate. Ask God questions like, Lord, what do you mean here? Yeah. Okay. Even in today's scriptures, you can meditate on it afterwards. Lord, what do you mean here? Have I been sitting on the judgment seat? Have I been criticizing others? Mm -hmm. Have I been mm -hmm. judging others? How mm -hmm. have I been looking at people around me? Am I a hypocrite? Yeah. Do mm -hmm. I do one thing? Do I say one thing and do the other? Right? Mm -hmm. Am I criticizing people? Don't be afraid to have this kind of conversation with God. This is what I do, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because we, he knows us. Our lives before him are bare. We can't lie to him. When you realize, mm -hmm. when you understand that your mm -hmm. life is bare before God, you'll be open. You talk about your failures. You talk about your shortcomings. Mm -hmm. You talk about, you know, the things that other people don't even know about you. That is mm -hmm. how it is with God. So don't be afraid to have these conversations because he will begin to, 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 you know, to reveal to you. He will respond when you ask him questions. Lord, am I like this? Am I criticizing? Am I being bad? Am I doing that? He will respond to you, right? He will show you exactly where you are going wrong. He will even remind you what you did. There are so many times when I see it and he will bring up a scenario, something that may have happened 10, 20 years ago and you flash it before me. How have I remembered that? It's because I'm having a conversation with him. Then he will begin to show me. I'll even remember what was said at that point, where I went wrong. That is how God speaks to us. Amen. It's a replay of events. It's always clear for me. And I must say, I'm not special, okay? God is available you know, mm -hmm. for everyone. He is there for everyone. You don't hear him. You don't have a conversation with him because you never make time to talk mm -hmm. to him. So nobody is special. When people are talking about these things, they are not special. It's, excuse me. It's just because they have time. They sit mm -hmm. with God and they begin to, to have a conversation. They're not just praying. You know, those prayers, people just mm -hmm. pray, pray and they run off to, to work. They just pray a little bit and they want to watch TV. You know, but mm -hmm. you sit and you wait. It's a two-way conversation. You yeah. speak to him, you ask him questions and wait. Yeah. He'll begin to bring to memory the things that he wants rectified. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Now let's get to this part, which a lot of people like. Verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. I like it in NIV. Mm -hmm. Give mm -hmm. and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together. Mm -hmm. We like this scripture, right? So mm -hmm. they will put into your lap a good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over with no space left for more. <laughs> for with the standard of measurement you use when you do good to others, it will be measured to you in return. So most people use this scripture for offering. 
especially when they want to manipulate people. This is it. Most people want to use this just when it's you now can okay, so and so uh, come and pray for the offering. Then they will come. They will come to challenge you. They will come to twist you. They will come to manipulate you. Give and it shall come back to you a good measure. So we are listening. Unfortunately, since people are naturally selfish, right? Yeah. And they want to get rich quickly. They think it's Lord though. Let us, today we are taking money because when I'm taking 100,000 today, tomorrow I'll take a 200,000 profits, a return on investment. That is how Christians are thinking. They are thinking they're coming to invest because there's a return here that is promised. Give, it shall come back to you, right? Pray, and it will be pressed down. You know, that is what we are expecting. When I give so many notes, by the time it comes back to me, it shall be overflowing on my lap. I won't even have any room, right? <laughs> they give even what they don't have. Some people don't have. They are swiping credit cards because churches now even have those uh, swiping machines. <laughs> so people are using credit card. Why are we giving to the Lord what we are borrowing? We should give what we have. Mm -hmm. You Amen. see? So others are borrowing. Because they are believing, they are being told that it shall come back to you. So you are thinking, ah, it's Lord. Let me just invest 10,000. It shall come back to me, a good measure. So when it comes back, then I'll return to the credit cards. Okay. You will wait and you will wait. It won't be pressed down. It won't roll over. Because you have not had a revelation, right? The return on investment, where did you invest? It matters where the investment, it matters where your heart is, right? We know that where the treasure is, there, that is where the heart is. Now, as you are giving, where is your heart? What is your motive? Anyway, this scripture comes with a promise. This same scripture of give, right? It comes with a promise. The action in this sentence is give, all right? And the promise is it will be given to you. This is a promise that we have all been given. We don't just give money, right? Therefore, let's not just concentrate on that. Unfortunately, like mm -hmm. I said, people are selfish. They're just mm -hmm. talking about when they stand there. Imagine if you're in a church service and they say, give, it shall come back to you. And then you get up and you you packed maybe milli meal. Are they going to accept mm -hmm. that as offering? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or do they want cash? Mm -hmm. Because for me, when we are giving, when we are asked to give, yes, it doesn't say give money give it give give 200 or give 300 the more you give the more you it just says give what are you giving in this instance yeah. mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we can give our time by visiting people in hospital or in prison yeah. that is giving you are giving your time to the lord because when you go to visit these people it's not about you you are going to encourage them right you are going to give you know share the good news with them you are going to teach them about forgiveness about repentance as you visit them you're going to tell them about god's love about healing so that is also giving provide physical and emotional support to those who need it it's giving right you can give away clothes, you can give away shoes, you can give away even plates, you can give away anything that is your disposal. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about money and shame on people that just want to hammer on give, meaning give money. When mm -hmm. somebody comes dancing, comes dancing with a bag of mini meal, they are they, not going to look at it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we, that is what we have. So you can take care of the old, it's also giving, it's part of giving your time and so forth, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And verse 38 reminds us, for with the standard of measure you use when you do good to others, it will mm -hmm. be measured to you in return. Meaning, mm -hmm. the way you give to others is the way God will give to you. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Simple. Mm -hmm. In Zambia, they like saying, if you're simple. <laughs> but we want, to, we want to complicate matters. Just the same measure. If you're a shorthand, if you don't want to give, just know you also won't be given. What do you, what, you haven't invested. It is about investing for the glory of God. It's be when you give, you are giving as unto the Lord, right? Whatever we are doing, we should do as unto the Lord. Not when we are giving, one hand is, is on Facebook. We are even going live. We are giving to the orphans. You are live. You have already been rewarded. 
the mm. kind of giving that God is asking for, the one that he's talking about, is when mm -hmm. we are giving, we are meeting the needs of other people. And it's mm -hmm. between him and us. We don't have to blow the trumpet. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in the same measure, you should expect, remember, it's, it's like mm -hmm. sowing a seed. Yeah. What are you sowing? You sow lies, you reap lies. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, sow, you sow love, you reap love. So, but then the issue is, it's not going to come through from the people that you are giving. If you give people on the streets, do you think they'll give back to you? No, they won't. Okay. So when we are giving, let's have this in mind. We are doing it as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. I was prompted this morning that after we have gone through these scriptures, um, as you have noticed, the format wasn't the same. Uh, I don't want to do things like, uh, you know, to make it a structure, like this is how we routine things rather, because God is not mm -hmm. about routine, but he will do things based on what he wants for each day. So we come to him with an open heart. And what I got when I was preparing is today, you should just pray about what I have shown you, what we have learned about. Amen. There's mm -hmm. judgment, there's forgiveness, right? There is giving, there's not, you know, fighting back. There's the issue of just letting go of situations. So there's a lot that we have learned today and I would actually recommend, I would rather, or should I say, I would encourage you to listen to the message again because this is about our hearts being changed. The way we live our lives being changed. The way we relate to others being changed. The expectation that we have from others. The expectation that we have from God also. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray today. And um, I'm going to give guidance based on the scriptures from verse 27. Mm -hmm. So let us all pray. In your own words, you can pray. Otherwise, you can just use the words that I'm using today. Amen. Amen. Lord, help me to love my enemies. Remember, we were talking about enemies and we were saying we won't be able to love unless mm -hmm. the Lord himself gives us the grace. So you know yourself who you have marked as, as an enemy. You can mention those people because this is a direct instruction. You know, it's not a general prayer, but it is rather those people that have hurt you, you know, those people that want bad things to happen to you. This is what we are praying about today. We are aware of the things around us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not of this world, but we are here in this world. So these things touch us. Mm -hmm. We are humans. These things are hateful to us. But mm -hmm. as long as we don't forgive, as long as we don't let go, we are not going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to pray. Amen. Amen. So let us pray together. Lord, help me to love my enemies. Help me to do good to those who hate me. I pray today that you bless the people who ask for bad things to happen to me. Let's take a bit of time here to pray for people who are mean to us. Just take time because you know, when we say we are praying for people that have hurt us, you know, the people that hate us or people who have done hateful things to us, we know it's specific people. But today, as the Lord brings the names to you, let us pray for these people and let's ask God to bless them. Father, we open up our hearts to you just as you have instructed us today. We submit to you. We want our hearts to be pleasing to you. We want the inside of us to be pleasing to you. I pray for every person listening right now, my Lord. However they have been hurt, whichever enemies they have, I pray that today you will give them the grace to release them. I pray, almighty God, even as they pray to you, that you will grant them that grace. Even as they bless them, may these people be blessed. May these people who have been marked as enemies be blessed. Mm. We pray for them wherever they are, my Lord, that even as they hear your word, they will not harden their hearts. Because we have blessed them, because we return kindness to them, we give them kindness because you have shown us kindness. We pray that they will be responsive to this kindness. Mm. Lord, help me to do for others what I would like them to do for me. Give me a new heart, change my heart, change my way of thinking. Mm. Mm. You know, because there are times when we do things 
based on what people have done for us, you know, to us. Mm. So we retain bad things mm. that the people have done to us. Mm. But in this prayer today, we are saying, help us, Father, to do things that we want other people to do to us. So if you want to receive love, if we want other people to love us, let us love. Mm. If we want other people to give to us in whatever way, mm. let us also give, let us open our hearts to this. Mm. But Lord, we, we ask that you help us, that we'll be able to do for everyone, not selective, but for everyone, because you love everyone. This is what we have been told in the way, that he loves everyone. Mm. That is why he causes the sun to shine on, on the good and the bad. Mm. Help me not to judge others so that you will not judge me, my Lord. Mm. Help me not to condemn others so that I will not be condemned. Mm. Father, give me the grace to forgive others so that I too will be forgiven. Yes. Help me to give a good measure to others so that I can also receive an mm. overflow from you. Mm. I thank you today. I thank you for your word. I receive every word. I receive every instruction. I submit to you. Help me to be obedient to your word and to your will. Because, Father, it is about you. It is not about me. It is not what people around me say, but it is about you. And I want everything about me to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 amen and amen. You know, this is how we need to learn to pray. Prayer shouldn't be complicated. We read the scriptures, we have a conversation with God, and then we ask him to show us the message for us from that, that passage that we have read. This is how we learn. It is not complicated, but we need to have the time to fellowship with him. People have time to do all sorts of things, but they never have time for God, which is such a shame. But you know, the good part about God